This is a case in which we're going to demonstrate how to go transgraft to access an end delete cavity and inject onyx. Uh, we're starting off here with the gore endograft. Uh, these marks, which you see superimposed, are fusion marks, little red circles where we're going to try and exit the endograft. We've chosen this based upon the preoperative CT scan, which has been carefully evaluated to see where the end delete cavity is. Uh, the red and the green line represent a pair group of lumbar arteries, and the blue line represents the border of the uh, endolite cavity itself. So that we're, we're lining the aptus sheath up here along the, what we've determined should be the exit point. If you look at it in multiple different dimensions, this should rotate from being a circle to a line if we're completely um, in a perpendicular to it. And so here we use two orthogonal planes to try and line up um, where we're going to create an exit um, out of the uh, stent graft. So now we've gone back in a position. Uh, the aptus sheath is, is being lined up and we're pushing the uh, spectronetics laser catheter um, up against the wall of the device. And at this point, um, this is the laser power source. You can see basically what the laser settings are that we use. You then activate this with a little bit of forward pressure you should see this uh, poke through uh, the fabric, in this case, PTFE. Remember, these um, laser catheters um, essentially have a um, central lumen, which we can advance uh, a wire into the endolite cavity. And again, the curved blue line represents uh, part of the wall of the endolite cavity, so you're fairly reassured that we're actually going into the right place. Uh, at this point in time, we're actually taking the, the laser catheter out. It's done its job. And you have an option of trying to upsize this hole so you can get a sheath out into the endolite cavity. Or, if we're happy with the communication which occurs between the endolite cavity and the lumbar vessels, then in this case we're using microcatheter, which can be advanced straight into the endolite cavity. Now again, there are various different ways in which you can uh, go ahead and maneuver around inside the anus of the sac, and that's probably the single biggest challenge is being able to, because you really want to, if possible, access these lumbar arteries directly. Uh, the concept in using a flow-directed material such as onyx is that it will actually track along the cavity and perhaps get directly into the uh, lumbar arteries directly. So here we're actually putting more wire out there so that the, the microcatheter will not back the wire out into the uh, endograft. So you need a little bit of wire, at least get onto the stiff portion of the wire in order to be able to do this. But from the march, you can see how accurate we've been in terms of being able to uh, get right into the target and into the endolite cavity. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the microcatheter is coming up. Microcatheter is now going through the hole we made with the laser catheter. And the same idea, it can be difficult to see the auto markers on these microcatheters. You've got to make sure you get a microcatheter out so when you pull the wire back, you, know, you don't find yourself uh, on the inside of the endograft again. So uh, you can see these auto markers uh, on the microcatheter tracking around uh, that guide wire. Uh, there are a number of different microcatheters which are onyx compatible. You're going to have to choose the one that, um, that uses the direction microcatheter as one example. Uh, but there's a, a variety of different catheters that work. And what's important then is to know what the volume of these catheters are, because when you come to Pudonix, now what you can see is that um, the microcatheter is looped around inside the aneurysm sac. You can't actually see the catheter itself. All you can really see are the radiopaque markers that, that are present on this. But we've taken the wire out. Uh, what we would typically do is, is do a little uh, and puff of dye to make sure we're where we think it is. Very difficult to inject through these microcatheters. The microcatheters come with different internal lumens. Um, and so typically what we'll do is get a 3cc syringe and use approximately 25% uh, percent contrast dye. Uh, because if you use a big syringe, you're just not going to be able to inject it. And all you're really trying to do here is actually confirm that you're inside that uh, aneurysm uh, endolite cavity. Here we can go with digital subtraction. You can see the dye is not washing out. It's filling that sac. And we're pretty happy uh, that we know exactly where we are. Now, anytime you see these markers like that moving, then again, these are fusion lines. It just means that we're moving the image intensifier. 
and getting a different view again to try and confirm, uh, make sure we're happy inside the endolate cavity. And so although it's off screen, is that the C arm is actually rotating, uh, so we can get a different view and just uh, puff in a little more dye and confirm that we're actually where we think we are. So again, in order to get there, we've used an to sheath. Map to sheath is shapeable. We've lined that apto sheath up on the exit point that we determined on the CT scan. We fused the CT scan with the intraoperative image, which is relatively easy because you get the endograph there. Now we're looking at a different view, and we know it's not washing out because it's tracking around the outside of the endograph when we inject the dye. So we're pretty happy. Uh, we can go back into what is the optimal uh, position uh, for injecting uh, onyx. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. So here's what Onyx looks like. It comes in a fast and slow polymerization. Um, you have to prime. You can't, as soon as it gets in contact with blood, then what happens is that uh, it starts um, polymerizing. So you have to prime the catheter with DMSO. That's the yellow syringe we showed you. If you look on the left, this is essentially what you're doing inside the endograft. You're, it's, it's a slow injection. And you can see it appears uh, as this black line, uh, this black material which has been extruded. Now, this is not exactly the best view. We know the catheter's fairly far out there. You either want to be orthogonal to the exit point, so you make sure none of this is coming back inside the endograph. We'll, we'll go, go to that in a minute. And so this expands. The analogy is somewhat like lava in that it gradually fills up the space you can see from the previous endogram, it's tracking through the endograph, not through the endograph, through the endolate cavity, sorry. The purple mark, which you can see here, is the, uh, the contralateral marker in the endograph. And as long as that stays within the purple line, then we know that our fusion marks are actually are, are, are good. And because an early warning, if something happens, the fusion patient moves, table moves, some, something like that actually takes place. So now we're going to go back, looking at this uh, a more satisfying view. You can see how this is, the onyx has followed the path of least resistance. Uh, it's going back towards the lumbar orties, may even be creeping down a little bit in the lumbar orties. So, you know, not entirely, I can't say I'm entirely convinced that we obviously got that. But we filled that space. Now we're getting to the point, that, you know, are we going to do any more at this point? And so I think here we're going to opt to quit. Then you pull the microcatheter out. You, most people, these, it's just a microcatheter that's created the hole. Um, then we I mean, usually uh, don't uh, seal the hole. Uh, the other thing to think about is to choose exiting an area where you can actually put a stent graft or cuff in the inside of it if need be. One of the things that we're in the habit of doing is actually get a comb beam CT completion. We can then overlay that with the preoperative CT to look at where the end leak cavity was. Um, and just make sure that we've got this in the right position, that there's not something else that we actually need to do. Remember, there were two lumbar orders that were right behind that neck that were uh, feeding uh, the sac. So final angiogram, make sure there's no extravasation there that we can actually see. You can see the onyx is that refractile stuff that overlays it. Uh, maybe a little bit that's tracking down one of those lumbar orders. Certainly nothing brisk coming out of it. And this is just an example of what the planning and it looked like. And you're looking at an NPR. Uh, we colorized in the end of the We were really trying to get into it because we knew that's where the lumbar orties were. You can see on the bottom right panel, the lumbar artery tracking around posteriorly. And so this is just a way that it kind of helps us uh, navigate intraoperatively. Uh, I mean, all of this is planned of a CT scan. Increasingly, we're actually getting dynamic CT scans. So we can actually flow, see the flow occurring through these end of lake cavities. Idea being that, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you can only get one of them, you're probably better getting the inflow artery than the outflow artery. So this actually was done preoperatively. Um, it kind of lets you see where the cavity is that we tried to get into. And now we can actually take the completion comb beam, fuse the endographs together so we know we've got pretty accurate fusion and see whether we've actually got the onyx um, in, uh, in the right space.
So being able to work on this multiplanar reconstruction is absolutely critical in being able to understand uh, what's going on. Again, bottom right panel, you can see where we've marked. Uh, typically, we, we've made a convention when we do this, the structures on the right, we mark with that red line, structure on the left, we mark with the green line, so that if we come off axis, uh, it's pretty obvious when you go on AP, but sometimes you're not AP, and you've got to be able to look at this. And and so when you, when you rotate it, it's pretty useful in being able to know exactly which one we're looking at. Thank you for watching this.